Good morning. Welcome to the Jay Dennis Podcast for Tuesday, November 27th, the year of our Lord, 2018. This podcast will be out on Wednesday. And anytime I do a podcast that's recorded on my phone, it can only do up to 10 minutes at a time. Otherwise, I can't upload the file. So I believe this podcast will have two parts. And literally, the part that comes right after this one was like the day before. So usually, usually, how it goes is if it's disjointed like that, I'll do a clip for the day of, and then when it moves on to the next section, it goes from like the past week. So like if I do a podcast on Tuesday, uh, the clips, if I recorded them from Wednesday on, I'll order them accordingly. So there's a summar- su- summation of how to listen to the Jay Dennis podcast. Um, ideally, I would just sit in my basement and record the whole thing at once and have a list of topics and stuff to uh, rattle off. But sometimes life happens and you don't get in your basement to record a podcast. Uh, Thanksgiving was good. Thanksgiving was great. Life is great. Like I've, like I've said in like maybe like a recent podcast, I'm shedding a negative skin where aside from any skeletons or demons that I've had with like past family members or past friends or bandmates or whatever, it's become significantly easier. So, you know, cause time can or cannot heal all things. You actually have to take it a step further. Usually, you know, it could be 10 years since something's happened, but you still think about it every day and you're still holding on to something. But like, all the learning and all the self-development you're doing is part of the process, but until you, like, execute those things and, like, put the plan into action and actually see fruition, that's when, you know, you're making the right decision. And I've known for a long time that I've been making phenomenal decisions. Of course, I've made mistakes and some poor ones here and there, but that's, that's fine. It's all part of the process. Uh, I'm I'm way better off today than I ever was. Which is good. Life should only keep getting better. My best days are not behind me. They are ahead. And as I sit here now, it's a phenomenal day. Uh, So yeah, spent Thanksgiving up in Oregon. Up in rural, rural Oregon. What was the theme of Thanksgiving? I'll tell you what it was. It was Slayer some All That Remains, Crash Bandicoot Warped for the PlayStation, a book about retirement, a little bit of business. What else did I listen to? Oh, God. I thought that I was going to, like, give Dragon Force another try and give them a fair shake and get into them. But, uh, much like my impression of them back in high school it's pretty much the same where it's like yeah this is overdone mechanically created music back then they were known for like writing super fast guitar licks and like being like speed metal and like crazy and like modern and have like this epic vocalist singing about like medieval times and like you know through the fire and the flames and stuff like that but it's just it it's it's with 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 certain music, I I appreciate a certain amount of rawness, but I think it's safe to say that for the most part, I don't like overly uh, mechanical or computer generated sounding music, especially when it's like actual analog equipment, like a, like a guitar or like a like a drum set or anything. Like I don't want it to sound I don't want it to sound computer generated. In Dragon Force, even if their guitarists can play fast and play really well, or have or haven't been some of the fastest guitarists in existence at one point. I saw them live and they, they weren't terrible. Like, like it seemed like they were able to play a lot of the stuff. Maybe it was just slightly slower, but I don't know. Uh, so all that to say is I still not super in the Dragon Force. Not at all. 
but Slayer uh, kind of growing on me a little bit. Um, out of the big four, they're kind of my least favorite thrash metal band from the 80s, but you know, out of Megadeth, Metallica, Anthrax, and uh, Slayer, those are the big four. Slayer's probably my least favorite, because I don't talk about Anthrax much, but I know that when I was 14, and then like as of recently, like they put out a pretty good album a couple years ago, I know that they had a stronger impact on me, but still Megadeth and Metallica. Uh, I kind of go back and forth between which band I like better, and it's purely because of the times, it's purely because of how long they've been around, and because they used to be kind of part of the same band, and because they're both 80s thrash metal. And both bands took a more melodic turn in the 90s, and then over time started going back to their roots and getting faster again. So I mean, it's pretty fair, that's, that's why the whole Megadeth versus Metallica thing's even a thing, because like, they're, they have very similar stories, but Megadeth's put out more more music, and in my opinion, they put out more good albums. Uh, their music is way more diverse. The guitar work is more interesting. Uh, but as much as I love Dave Mustaine's voice, I always tend to favor James Hetfield a little bit more. Uh, Megadeth's guitar solos are way better, uh, even though Kirk Hammett is pretty damn good, pretty damn great, one of the best. But I don't know, man. There's, there's still a lot of songs on Metallica's first five albums first four albums are mainly off Master of Puppets and Injustice for All where I'm just like, these guys are brilliant like you can't fuck with Metallica uh, my uh, father-in-law had a Playstation like an old school PS1 set up and had Crash Bandicoot warped on it so I played that I and make me money now, so I treated myself to a Black Friday sale, downloaded a couple games off the PlayStation Network. And even when I have money, I'm still frugal. So like it's like I, you know, I'm paying I'm paying off debt right now. It's like I'm not gonna go crazy. But yes, I did treat myself after months of suffering. Uh I got finally got Crash Bandicoot, the uh Warp trilogy, which is the first three games from the nineties, uh remastered, redone. Uh, it's pretty great so far. I love it. Uh, also got God of War, which I kept saying should be called God of Four, because it's pretty much the fourth one in the series, even though it's like the eighth one ever created. Uh, but instead of spending like 40 and $50 on those games respectively, I spent $20 each. And then I got Last of Us for $5. So instead of spending $100 on some games, I spent 45 Like... There's people that shop deals, but they do it consistently enough to where they do so much shopping that the fact that they shop deals is redundant. I don't shop often, but when I do shop, I usually shop deals, so it's cost-effective on some level. So I got that going on. It's going to be a good, it's going to be a great uh, month for that stuff. Again, I don't play video games too frequently, but I, I, I do go through seasons and phases where I'll play for a little bit or I'll kind of bench play and beat a game in a day or two blah 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 um, so no, Thanksgiving was great the drive was safe, it was good uh, we had good planning, we brought our dog with us this is the first time I've ever had a dog that I can trust off leash every dog I've ever owned growing up if the door was open, they would bolt out the door this one um, he listens like I still wouldn't open up the door and let him run out you know, into the street or something, but when we take them hiking, and when we take them out to somewhere that's rural, r- 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 rural, r- rural, uh, I trust him. You know, I have to keep up with him, and he kind of runs around a little bit, but he never goes out of sight, and he listens, especially if I raise my voice. So it's kind of refreshing. So I want to thank you guys for listening to this podcast. Uh, go to raptorriot.bandcamp.com to download the Sabotage GP. Uh, my financial endeavors and my dreams are uh, kind of starting to accelerate not endeavors, my my goals and my, my my plans of action are starting to accelerate. So I'm able to put money into Raptor Riot, so you better believe I'm going to be recording a song here as soon as I can. It'll probably be in the next month. Um, that's, my, that's my goal. And most of my goals that I've created as of late, I've kept. 
So support this uh, podcast, support the uh, the band. <laughs> Subscribe to me on YouTube. Uh, all the past podcast episodes are on a playlist, the Jay Dennis Podcast. And if you want to watch my other stuff, it's on a separate playlists too. So until next time. See ya! Good morning. This is Jay Dennis with the Jay Dennis Podcast. This podcast will probably be for Tuesday, November 27th, 2008. 20 years since 1998. Guys, the 90s are slipping away from us. When the turn of the century happened, they were gone. But now that we're almost in the 2020s, they'll have started 30 years ago. <sighs> the good news is, with modern technology and modern nostalgia, and video filters, we're kind of able to recreate some shit. But yeah, so... It's, it's 5 a.m. I'm on my way to the gym. The whole putting the alarm clock in the other room trick is working. Because all three mornings where that's happened, I stayed up. I did it last Monday and Tuesday, and then I spent the rest of the week up in Oregon. Which my sleep schedule didn't change too much. You know, I wasn't up at 4 or 5 in the morning. You know, if anything, I was going to bed around like 10, maybe 9 o'clock on some nights and still waking up around like 6.30 or 7, which for me is like sleeping in. Um, one of the main points of me sharing waking up early or my sleep schedule is there are people out there that stay up late and they thrive. You know, they're, they're creative, they're up until like 1 in the morning and they get a lot of work done. Like, more power to them. It's just with the traditional schedule and the fact that humans do tend to function better in daylight. Rather than nighttime, night owls are a rare breed. I share it just to show that throughout the course of your life, it's easier to transition into waking up early and being up when nobody else is up. And I know that everybody listening to this isn't going to start waking up tomorrow early and start saturating my morning time by being up with me. I know that's not going to happen. I know that when I get to the gym around 5.15, there's going to be those other people that start off early for whatever reason. They're either early birds or... Maybe it's their job, or maybe they were in the army at one point. I just know that my days tend to go a lot better when I get an early start. So I kind of had to calibrate it, tweak it, and figure out, okay, if I want to have X amount of my 10 victories before 10 a.m., which are personal, professional, mainly personal, so that I can hit the ground running and have the best day. Optimize. Optimize my day. Then a big factor is consistently waking up at 4 a.m. 4.30 is okay too, but 4 is better because it's more time. Because I want to spend an hour, at least an hour at the gym sometimes it takes me, like this morning, I got up at 4, but I didn't just leave till, for the gym until like 5, because I don't work out on an empty stomach, so sometimes it takes me, it takes me a little bit, I'm a little sluggish, it takes me a little bit to get going, and that's something that I'm working on, is being a little faster when I first wake up, and I don't need to give myself a damn heart attack or hypertension, because I, I wake up and I have to, I have to get going right away, but I'm just like, I'm really slow. It's better to be slow and get that out of my system early instead of doing it later. But, yeah, so we go to the gym. Pretty much all my victories involve 
a couple of professional items, but mainly personal development items and like health. So like I have to drink at least 20 ounces of water, which I leave sitting out overnight so that I can chug it in the, chug it in the morning because your body dehydrates overnight. So I immediately, because I drink coffee, coffee can dehydrate you. So I don't drink coffee until I've been up for about two hours. And then the water, I want to get that first. I want to get that in first. So I wouldn't really call that a victory. I would just call that more of a ritual. It's just a, a thing I do every morning. You know, but the victories include actually getting out of bed at my intended time. So boom, victory right right there, right away. As soon as my wife my wife gets out of bed too, I make the bed. Making the beds a victory. Meditate for at least 10 minutes. And this isn't in order. Although over time, it might start to become more orderly. But then there's the gym. There's stretching. We're already up to five. Uh, I walk my dog with my wife. That's, that's, that's fostering love and family. Like, everything has a purpose and everything's beautiful. And then this is where the slightly more difficult things come in. They don't sound difficult on the surface, but getting to them and timing them right can be challenging, and that's that's the whole fun of doing this, is figuring out how to work it. Um, on Mondays and Fridays, I have a class at my, at my career, so on those days, my victory is going there and, like, actively being engaged. Like, I don't miss classes. There are people that I work with that skip classes. I don't skip classes. Unless somebody absolutely needed to book an appointment with me one of those mornings for which that's perfectly understandable. I'm doing a profitable activity above a development activity. So that's like that's like the exception. But reading at least 20 pages out of whatever book I'm reading right now, I'm reading a book called Seven Steps to Retirement or something like that. Seven, yeah. It, it, the book's very pertinent to my field. It talks about, you know, life insurance, annuities, long-term care, a few other uh, concepts, ideas, uh, certain designations I can get as a financial professional. It's a very educational book. And, uh, again, like with a lot of finance books, I don't agree with 100% of what's in there. But there's some very interesting information that's kind of opened, my, opened up my perspective on some things. Like, if you go into the book thinking, oh, annuities are bad but then you read the book or you learn how annuities work or how social security is based. It is an annuity or like a corporate pension plan is an, is an annuity. It's just a lot of times it's just got the wrong name attached to it. But social security is questionable with a big generation of retirees about to come out. And then the following subsequent generation is not, they're, they're not being enough to, necessarily replace them so there's going to be a whole lot of taking and not a whole lot of accumulation so the need for personal financial products is way higher because you don't want to just rely on the government for your for your retirement you need, you need way more than just a social security check every month and then most again most companies have done away with pensions so you start your own you start your own and that's the beauty of what I do is in a world where less and less places are offering employee benefits, part of what I do is offer individual benefits. So, like, those things aren't totally gone. You just have to take the action, not just default on what your employee does, but, like, take action into your own hands, work with a financial professional, and pick yourself up and develop a plan. Because most people, all people that develop a plan are happier than all people that don't. Unless they got some sort of brain chemical imbalance or something. But... Anyway, so that form of education is a victory. Reading that, reading those 20 pages and basically just having my day planned out and uh, doing a little bit of journaling. Um, there's a point system that I follow for prospecting and for my business activity. And I have to get X amount of points a day. And in order for me to just not wing it, I, I plan them out in advance. I say, okay, I'm going to call this many people today with the hopes that this many people maybe pick up and that, you know, when people pick up, that's a, that's a point. So like 
I plan the points out. I read, I meditate, I do, I, I make sure the blood is flowing. Like I, I, I've basically been active for four hours or three hours, at least three hours by the time everybody else is rolling out of bed and I'm, I'm killing it. And it makes for a really good day.